Revelation 3, and verse 3. Here, where I can see it. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I come upon thee. Look in Luke. Chapter 12. Verse 39 and 40. And this know. That if the good man of the house. Had known what hour the thief would come. He would have watched. And not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be there ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Now I'm going to skip over to 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 2. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And the last scripture is Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10. Sorry, what's that? Chapter 3 verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. May we say it. Father, we thank you for another privilege to be in thy house this morning, God. Father, I pray that this message, Lord, would, would be a warning to those who are not ready. But Father, I just pray, Lord, it would be a blessing to those that are ready. Father, if there's one watching on Facebook or YouTube that's lost, Lord, I pray that you'd speak to that heart. Father, give me the words to say to them, Lord, that would make them realize, Lord, that they're headed to an everlasting hell. Father, Lord, that they would come to know you in this hour. Father, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor in Jesus' sweet name. Amen. Amen. You know, they say that 90% of all break-ins happens at night. Why is that? Because they're concealed in the darkness. Yeah. That's right. They don't want to be seen. And they want to be able to get in, get what they can, and get out before they get caught. 
You know, Jesus warns us. I'm sure there's more scriptures in there that I didn't find about him coming. Like a thief in the night. Why is he going to do that? Unexpected. 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 The Bible plainly tells us that no man knows the hour or the day. I don't believe Jesus knows when he's coming. He won't know until God tells him, Son, go get my children. It's time. But the Bible tells us to be ready to watch for him. And those that are saved, that are truly, truly saved, I believe they're watching for Jesus to come. I know I am. Yeah. It would <clears throat> please me very well if he come today. It would please me if he come tomorrow. It would please me if he come Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Thursday, or Friday, or Saturday. The sooner he comes, the sooner we get out of all this torment we're in. Amen? Amen. Yep. Yeah. Now, we got these people that claim that we're going to have to stay here through the tribulation. I don't know where they get that. Because God is a merciful God. I don't believe for one second that God is going to put us through what we can't take. Now, when the tribulation comes, there's going to be a time come that you're going to have to have that stamp. Or it may be a chill. But you're going to have to take the mark of the beast in order to do any transaction. Whether it be going to the grocery store, whether it be buying gas, whether it's putting your paycheck in the bank. You can't cash that paycheck if you ain't got the mark. So what's going to happen if you don't take the mark? They're going to keep. I don't know if it's going to be like ISIS, line you up in a row and start cutting heads off with a butcher knife or machete. I don't know how it's going to be. It may be they're going to shoot you. It may be a slow, painful death. But I don't believe for one minute that God is going to put us through that. He's going to call us away before the tribulation. And he tells us at least five times that he's going to come like a thief in the night. We're not going to know when. <clears throat> we have no idea. It could be this year, it could be next year. It could be today or tonight. But God tells us to be watching. And to be waiting. Used to be an old man in town. Every time you talk to him, you'd say, I'm looking up. I'm looking up. That tells me he was waiting. Waiting for Jesus to return. He was looking. 
Yeah. Old man's dead now. But he was one of the first ones called up. Because the Bible says those in the grave will be the first to be called up. And it's going to happen quicker than that. Then we're going to be called up. Yeah. And it's going to be quicker than that. But I would love to be standing in this church looking out the window and them graves start breaking up. There ain't no more I'd rather be than I am. It'll happen so quick you probably won't even realize it's happening. But if you could only get a glimpse of those graves first of all. What a thrill. And if we're still alive, I'm scared to death of heights. I am. Now we talked last fall over last winter about getting somebody to clean these lights out. And I said I would if we couldn't find nobody. But it'd probably take me a month to clean them out because I'm so scared of heights. When I get above the third ladder, uh, uh, the third step on the ladder, my knees start doing this. And I start wobbling. And what happens when you start wobbling? That ladder starts giving a little bit. And when that ladder starts giving, I'm scared to death then. Yeah. But can you imagine being called out while we're alive and flying through the air to meet Jesus. Don't think I'd be scared then. You really don't. Really don't think anybody with problems with heights is going to mind being called out. Being raptured. This won't happen so fast. I can't even begin to imagine that fast. And I don't know how far it is to heaven. I know you can't see it. But to travel that far, that fast. Yes, it'd be awesome. <laughs> but how many, truly, how many is waiting and looking for Jesus? You know, this old world They're trying their best to do away with anything that has to do with the Bible. They're trying to do away with the very sanctity of God. You hear people all the time on TV denouncing God, saying there is no God, that we're wasting our time. I don't see it. How? I don't see how anyone can live without God. I don't see how anyone can not believe in God. They need to come to Andrews and look at these mountains. And look at that beautiful blue sky when it's not cloudy. 
that right there tells me there has to be a God. Yeah. How anyone can say there's not a God. But there's one thing for sure. Each one of them, one day, will bow. And proclaim there is a God. Anyone say, I believe in God, but it's too late. They had their chance. Chance is while they was living on earth. And if they denounced God or turned and walked the other way when they heard the gospel, he's going to say, Depart. I never knew. That song we sung this morning, I've never heard it before. The Lake Without Water, is that the name of it? I'd never heard that before. But that fits right in to what I'm trying to get at this morning. If you don't know God, and you've never accepted him as your Savior. On judgment day, he's going to look you in the eye and say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Anyone want to walk away from God and make it spend eternity in heaven in splendor? But yet, if they don't, they're going to be into a eternal lake of fire. The lake of You know, I thought I got saved when I was about six, seven years old. And I tried to live right. And I went to church. But when I got 16 and I got my license, I was like, I guess, every other young in America. I thought I knew more than my mom and me. I moved out of the house when I was about 16, 16 and a half. Tried to make it on my own. But I couldn't do it. So I had to drag myself back home and ask forgiveness. Thank God I had a little mom and dad that said, come on back. Yep. <clears throat> and when I got about 22, 23 years old, I realized I didn't know Jesus. I didn't have a personal relationship. I didn't pray. I didn't read my Bible. I was just Spiritually, I was just there. I mean, I, I went to church. Didn't get nothing out of it. And, you know, after a while, you start wondering, well, what's all this about? You know, everybody's up shouting and, and having a good time. But, but I don't feel nothing. Why was I not feeling that? The devil had me deceived. He made me think I was saved. 
And if I had went on listening to him, when I die, I'd have split the hell wide open. <laughs> or if I'm here when the resurrection happens, I'd be left here to go through all that torment. But thank God he gave me enough sense to realize that I needed to do some soul searching. Mm -hmm. That I needed to get my altar and do some hard praying to find out am I saved? Am I lost? And you know what? I got up from that altar that time. I had something. Yeah. I felt something. I knew without a doubt God had saved my soul. I came up in tears. I think I ran around the church house about three or four times. Shouting. I had something in me. I had some joy that I'd never felt before. Now, because of that, I'm looking, I'm looking at Lord Jesus come today. I've caught myself saying that so many times. Lord Jesus come today. Put an end to all this strife and torment we're having to go through. I was telling Philip this morning before church. When we got home Friday night, we was wore out. And Andrew sat down in the recliner, and in a few minutes, she was gone. And I decided to get in my recliner and stretch out in case she needed me, because if I got back there in the bedroom, I'd never hear her. So I got in the chair at 2 o'clock in the morning. We thought somebody was on our porch. The talking was so loud that it woke both of us up. And Andy said, Jerry, somebody's on the porch. So I got up and turned the light on in the living room, moved up the shade. There ain't nobody there. So I looked where the road kind of takes the turn to go up Calvert Avenue. There was about 20 people at 2 o'clock in the morning. Must have been partying or something. And they was talking so loud that we could tell every word they were saying. That's torment when you're dead asleep and you get woke up like that. You don't know if somebody's going to try to break into your house or what's going to happen. I mean, it scared both of us. So, what could I do? They wasn't at the house. They was going up the road a little. What am I going to do? Holler out the door and say, shut up. We're trying to sleep. But we go through torment every day that we leave the house. And I am so looking forward to that day. It wouldn't bother me if we come like this second. I'm ready. I believe that y'all are ready. I don't know that for a fact, but I believe it. I believe y'all are ready. Nobody knows the condition of your heart except for you and God. But if you're living for God, your light's going to shine. Amen. And that lets people believe 
if you're ready to go, if you're a Christian, then that gives something to be thankful for. Yeah. But if you know, if you know, if you know that you're ready, I've heard since I was that high, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. But since I got saved, I never get tired of hearing it. Jesus is coming. I remember on the old roads in Mercer, there used to be a big, I don't even know if it's still like that, I don't remember on the old road in a long time. But down around Tamatla, I think it's right around the, that little bridge, there used to be a big stone cross. And up at the top, it had a heart on it. And it said, Jesus is coming soon. That was there when I was a kid. And because I've been hearing that for 55 years, I mean, I hard to remember back past 55 years when you're five years old. But I remember that big old concrete cross with the heart on top of it that said, Jesus is coming soon. And you can ride around now and find these white crosses that somebody made it says, Jesus saves. I wish I could find one of them put in my yard. I have no idea who made them. I have no idea where they came from. But I never get tired of hearing about the Lord and Savior right. and His promise that He's coming back. Are we ready? Search your heart. I'm talking to people on the internet. Because I believe in my heart that everybody here is ready. But search your heart. Make sure you know that you know that you know without a shadow of doubt. You're ready to take all that because it is very soon. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This has been short. This is what God gave me. Anybody got any comments? Testimony? Question? You know, you said there, it said, we'll come like a thief in that. Not even the angels in heaven knows when he's coming back. That's right. <clears throat> Jesus he's himself don't even know. When he comes back, he's going to pierce the angels. Where is that? Wicked. Yeah. He's going to be reunited back with his body that they were done. Right. And buried with him. Yeah. 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 Yeah.